Hello there! It's been a while. Yet, I'm not here to discuss my absence, but rather the story of Season 9 of The Division. Season 9 continues after Feilau eliminated President Andrew Ellis and indirectly caused her own death at Camp White Oak. Why did Lau disavow the division and turn rogue? What was her reason for eliminating Ellis? And what are Natalia Sokolova and Black Tusk's plans? Those questions I will answer in this video. Let's start with a quick recap. The final act of traitor Aaron Keener was to activate his rogue network. Across the US, agents loyal to his cause activated, sapping the division's resources and attention. Amid the chaos that followed, Black Tusk commander Barton Schaefer made a play for New York, rallying rogue agents embedded with the outcasts, Rikers, hyenas, and true sons. Schaefer had become too powerful a threat to ignore. The division hunt down and neutralize him, but find he was following someone else's orders. Former New York acting commander Fei Lau had turned her back on the division and was now working with the Black Tusk. Fei is entrusted by the mercenary group's mysterious owner, Natalia Sokolova, with guarding their most valuable asset. President Ellis. When intel shows that Lau is at Camp White Oak with Ellis, the division move in. But they arrive to find a shocking scene. Fei Lau has assassinated the president and blamed the division for it. Left with no choice, the agents are forced to kill Fei Lau. Nobody felt her betrayal and her loss harder than Kelso. Why had her former comrade turned her back on the division? What was her mission? And can the division survive what comes next? It seemed there was more to that story. It seemed Lau had a hidden agenda. I'm here. Ellis was a traitor. She should have let us bring him in. I can't condone the assassination of Potus Paul. What are you going to do with her body? Crows look hungry. Don't you fucking dare. She's a traitor. She was a good agent. They never did anything she didn't truly believe was the right thing to do. She deserves a proper burial. Roy. Come on. You want to keep working with us, Agent Kelso? You bring our girl home. Copy that. I'm going to do one more sweep. Then we can go to Haven. Shade files detected. File modified by Agent Fei Lau. Oh, now she's an agent. <sighs> Fucking Isaac thinks you died a hero. As suspected, it seemed Lau was playing double agent. Upon sweeping the lake house of Camp White Oak, Kelso finds a laptop with six encrypted shade files modified by Lau. To Kelso's surprise, Isaac designated Lau an agent of the division. 
together with her shade watch having returned to orange, it's likely Lau managed to bypass Isaac and designate herself as a rogue agent even when she played both sides. The six encrypted files on the laptop, Trust, Activation, Wraith, Tactics, Cuts and Rendezvous are an insurance policy directed at Kelso and will explain what Lau discovered and her reasons for disavowing the division. The first encrypted file, Trust, and the memoirs from Alice provide us with some clues to what will happen. I know we haven't worked together for very long, but I trust you, Kelso. <sighs> That's funny. You remind me a lot of my sister, Heather. I think you would have liked her. Probably a lot more than you liked me. Maybe that's why I couldn't tell you. I knew you would have tried to help. We're the same in that way. There are too many people who need you, who count on you. Fuck. <laughs> Even Rhodes loves you and he hates everybody. Once you got to New York, it was clear they didn't need me anymore. But there was something else happening. Another threat was building and I had to figure out what it was before it was too late. And I did it. I figured it out. I know what's coming, Kelso, and I know how to stop it. I just have to secure the button, then we can fight it together. We're family now. We bonded, fighting this war. Kelso, you're the only sister I have left. I couldn't tell you what I was planning. I needed you angry at me to keep my cover. I'm sorry. I know I hurt you, but I couldn't find another way to do this. Please know it only went down this way because the Division couldn't afford to lose you too. They need a leader. And you're the only one I trust. To keep Black Tusk from discovering her role as a double agent, she prevented Kelso, the Division and her friends from Haven from finding out. It must have been world threatening for her to give her life for it. Lau talked of the button, but didn't specify what it was related to. However, Alice's memoirs can further assist us in this. This whole organization is a complete shit show. I never should have agreed to work with those idiots. They think I'm their Patsy, their chicken hawk. That I'm just going to roll over and do whatever they want. I'm the goddamn president of the United States of America, the greatest country in the whole damn world, and some rich bitch obsessed with her dead daddy is not going to take me down. That woman is trying to build an empire on the ashes. Good luck with that. She's told me there's only two things standing in her way. Her brother and the button. Whatever that means. Well, Andrew, congratulations. You're a fucking genius. You became the leader of the free world just in time to install a global elite militia as a warden. And you have no one to blame but yourself. The government was not perfect, but it wasn't a fascist nightmare. And now, thanks to your stupid fucking deal with the literal she-devil, you've got two options. Do what she says, push the button and blow up the world, or for once, grow a fucking pair and stand up to the people trying to control you. They can't activate the protocol without your permission. There are fail-safes against it. If you make one good decision in your whole fucking miserable life, make this one. And now I'm journaling in third person, this is not a good sign. Andrew, get your shit together, stop acting so fucking crazy. Do not allow Natalia Sokolova to bully you into pushing the button. Do what you do best, Andrew. Lie. Pretend that you will do it. Tell her you will do it. Play the harbinger of death so you can fuck her over and be the hero. I can do this. I can beat her at her own game and when people find out what I've gone through, when they read my memoirs in 20 years and they will know the real hero of the story, the person who saved them from the brink of annihilation in the face of danger, was President Andrew Ellis. I will be the hero of this story. Mark my words. I will get this country back on track and out of this godforsaken pandemic. As long as I am alive, America will be safe from Natalia Sokolova and that snake McManus. Using Black Tusk as a global elite militia, Sokolova's objective seems to be a fascist rule over the world with only two hurdles in her path. Her brother, the now deceased division agent Felix Sokolov, and the button. Quotes from Ellis' diary, and I'm paraphrasing here, push the button and blow up the world and and they can't activate the protocol without your permission, there are fail-safes against it. It's reasonable to assume Sokolova's objective is to gain access to the nuclear launch codes to either use nuclear missiles as leverage or launch them. Lau prevented Sokolova access by eliminating Alice, as there are fail-safes in place to prevent such a thing from happening. 
However, if someone is driven enough, there's always a way. And as we know, Sokolova has friends within the former government of the United States. Perhaps this is where an unknown character named McManus comes in. Who he is, is currently unknown. At the same time, another threat rises in Washington DC. True sons are being led by one Captain Lewis and four of his lieutenants. However, Lewis isn't the new leader, as this is another unknown character called General Anderson, a former strategist for Anton Ridgway. The ties a general has to the former government, and in turn Black Tusk, could hint at an upcoming coalition between the True Sons and Black Tusk, as previously seen with the Last Man Battalion and Colonel Bliss. Well, it looks like the True Sons are getting bolder under their new leader, General Anderson. He used to be a strategist for Ridgeway, and it looks like his ambition has reached new heights. He's smart. They're keeping him at a secure location. We're getting reports of five of his True Sons moving on DC. Major Castillo, a civilian turned True Son. Castillo's background is in engineering. He's been taking over radio frequencies and broadcasting these rants that, frankly, if you didn't know better, could be quite the recruiting tool. Sergeant Daniels. This woman is a piece of work. We're getting reports of her indiscriminately assassinating civilians in the street. She's on a rampage. We've also got a logistical nightmare on our hands with Lieutenant Chang. His background and experience has shored up the True Sun supply lines and weapons. We can't afford to let him build their stockpiles. Then there's Major Xander. She has some anger management issues. Xander's been torturing and interrogating civilians. I don't know what she's hoping to learn from them, but we can't allow her to carry out this inquisition. And last but not least is Captain Lewis. We haven't actually seen him in DC yet, but we've intercepted comms that imply he and General Anderson are planning something big. Agent, you know what to do.